Hi there, Alex here at mixinglessons.com. In this video, we're going to have a look at how to use the click track in Luna. Now, before we get started, if there are any topics on Luna that you would like to see me make a video on, then please do feel free to leave a suggestion in the comments section, and I will certainly consider any suggestions that anybody makes, and I will do my best to help you in those areas. So we're going to start here on the create screen, because as you can see, when you're creating your session, you're able to set what tempo and time signature and obviously if you're going to be recording to a click track then you're going to want to make sure that that click track is running at the right tempo and time signature so you can enter any time signature that you would like and any tempo that you would like so let's say we want the tempo to be 130 bpm and we want the time signature to be 3-4 we can just enter those there and click create and it will create the session with those parameters something else that's quite useful that you can do when you're setting the tempo is, let's say you don't know what tempo the song is that you're going to record. Well, what you can do is you can use this tap button and you can tap along with the tempo of the song and it will calculate what the tempo is for you. So if we tap there, you can see that it thinks that it's somewhere around 120, 125 BPM, something like that. So we could leave our tempo at 123.8 if we wanted. I'm just gonna set it to 120 and then if we click enter it will create the session with that tempo and time signature so the click track is mostly controlled from this box here so we have a little metronome icon and when you click that once it's illuminated that means that the click track is on so that enables the click track when it's not illuminated that means the click track is off next to that we have a number one in a box now what that does is when you click on that, that enables a count off. So when you start the track recording, if this is switched off, the recording and the click track will just start immediately. Whereas if you switch the count off on, it will give you a count in. So let's have a look at that with and without the count off. So we'll turn the click track on and we'll start things recording first of all without a count off. So as you can see there, it made our recording and the recording started straight away. Now let's delete that and let's turn on the count off and then let's start again. So you can see there, it gave us a count in before the recording started, which can obviously be really, really useful. Now we'll talk a little bit more about the count off in a moment, but let's just look at this last box here, which is a decibel value. This controls the level of the click track that's going to your monitors. So you can turn the click track up or down in your main monitor output from here. Now we can actually go a bit further. We have some other options with this click track. So let's set that back to zero. If you click this arrow in the corner, this gives us some more options. So first and foremost, you have the option of when you hear the click track. So do you only want to hear the click track when you're recording, but not playing back? In that case, you would want the record option selected, but not the play option. If you want to be able to hear the click track when you record and play back, then you would want both options selected. And if for some reason you didn't want to hear the click track when you were recording, but only on playback, then you could select that there. So for the time being, we'll leave it on both record and playback. Now let's come back to the count in. Here you can select how many bars of count in you have. So if you want one bar, two bars, four bars, you can select that here and you can see that the number in this main box changes to let you know how many bars the click will count in for before the recording starts. Here you can choose where the click is sent to. So these are your cues and your monitor. So let's say one of the people that you're recording wants the click track, you can turn that up for them but maybe the other people who are recording don't want the click track. They don't want to be able to hear it. So you can send the click track to specific cues. You can also use this fader here to control the level of the click track that's going to the monitor. And that's actually the same control as this one. So if we turn this down, you can see that the decibel value changes up here as well. So you can control that from here without having to open this screen. And then finally, the last option that this drop down box gives us is the sound of the click track. So you have the normal kind of click track sound, but you may prefer that to be uh, the sound of a shaker, for example. Let's listen to that. Or it could be the sound of a 
hi hat whatever you're most comfortable with or whatever you prefer to record to okay now there are a couple of other things that i'm going to show you which are useful to know about when you're using the click track but first and foremost let's make a quick recording let's set it so that we have the click track while we're recording but not while we're playing back let's give ourselves a two bar count in and let's choose the bamboo sound for our click track so let's hit record gives us a two bar count in and then the recording starts okay and so let's stop the recording so we got a two bar count in we could hear the click track because we were recording now instead of recording let's play it back and we shouldn't be able to hear the click track and then the recording starts okay and so we can only hear the audio that we recorded and not the click track okay now there are a couple of other things that are useful to know about when you're recording and using a click track so you remember that we set the tempo and the time signature when we created the session and that tempo and time signature are on display here now if you wanted to change those you can simply double click on the tempo and you could change that to whatever you wanted so we could set it to 150 bpm and that will change the session and so the click track will reflect that you could change the time signature as well so we could set that to 4 4 okay now something else that's really useful that you can do is you could click here and you could go to this little plus sign next to the word tempo and if you click that that will recognize where you've placed your cursor and you can enter a tempo change at that point so you could at that moment change the tempo for the session to 120 hit enter and it will enter that tempo change and the click track will reflect that so let's go here and have it so that we can hear the click track on playback and then I'll play you this and you'll hear the tempo change so obviously it gets slower it comes down to 120 bpm at that point or you could simply just double click anywhere on here and the start point for the tempo change will be reflected in this box that comes up to allow you to enter your tempo change the same is true of the time signature so you can place your cursor anywhere that you want to enter a time signature change and you can go and hit the plus icon or you can simply double click wherever you want that time signature change to happen and then change the time signature to whatever you want to change it to so let's say at this point we're going to go to three four now i've entered that time signature change here but if you wanted to you could just click on it and move it okay and then finally another thing that you can do is you can draw in a tempo change so if you click this arrow here and if you hold down control you will get the pencil tool and you can draw in a tempo change and if you want that to be a more gradual change if you want that to happen over uh, more increments shall we say then you can simply change the grid at the minute it's set to quarter notes but you could set it to 16th notes and again hold down control to get the pencil and you can draw in a more gradual tempo change so as you can see you've got a lot of control over the click track in luna and it's all very intuitive things are very easy to find and it's all very easy to control and to have that click track set up in whatever way you want while you are recording and mixing now as always if you're somebody who records and mixes music then i've got three free guides that i think you'll find really really useful i've got an eq cheat sheet a compression cheat sheet and a vocal recording guide and you can get all three of those completely free when you head over to mixinglessons.com slash free dash downloads if you're interested in learning more about Luna, then I'll leave a video on screen, which is my breakdown of everything that's included in the Luna Pro Bundle. So you can watch that video and determine whether or not the Pro Bundle would be the right choice for you. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you again next time.